we are facing a very serious uh, crisis, or a tri triple crisis, uh, financial, jobs, and climate. And we have to solve all three at the same time while preserving our growth because we also need social inclusion in Europe. And uh, of, this is not an easy task, so we have to be very smart and see too that every decision we take uh, is, uh, benefits the solution of all three areas. EU 2020 aims at achieving high levels of employment, low carbon economy, productivity and social cohesion. This will be done through concrete actions to be implemented at both EU and national levels. The priorities um, should be achieved by pursuing a number of flagship initiatives. The most relevant ones for mobility and transport policy are Innovation Union to improve framework conditions and access to finance for research and innovation, resource efficient Europe to help decouple economic growth from the use of resources, increase the use of renewable energy sources, modernize our transport sector and promote energy efficiency. I think that uh, the 2002 could perhaps be a little bit optimistic to really come to uh, uh, very low uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But I think uh, 2050 uh, could be possible uh, to go to a decarbonized uh, society for uh, transport. But it will uh, cost a lot of uh, efforts uh, from research for investment. And uh, uh, really, it will be a political uh, challenge to achieve that. Uh, Mission. I think improving the internal market is enormously important. Absolutely. There are still a number of uh, uh, difficult points when you cross a border. Uh, I, would, I think the, 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 the Commission's changeover in the White Book on Transport uh, five years ago from modal shift to co-modality was clever. I think every mode has strengths of its own. What I'm afraid of is that some modes don't use their strengths up to a point that they, they could be used for infrastructure and, and network reasons, but also for reasons of internal efficiency. So we have a long-term challenge in front of us, and the question is how are we going to start uh, putting in place a regulatory framework that is going to uh, be the start of a reply to that challenge. And I would like to highlight two points that may be of importance in that long-term perspective. The first is that, is that the uh, transport sector has to move away from fossil fuels. And we know that fossil fuel use is the predominant uh, fuel that is uh, being used in the transport sector. And the other major element, I think, that also Commissioner Callas was bringing up, and that is that we need an optimal use of the different transport modes. We need to have appropriate investments. The 10T uh, package on the railways was mentioned by the commissioner. We will need technological... In my opinion, stabilizing and improving the transport infrastructure, as well as the environmental compatibility of the transport system, should be a flagship initiative of highest priority in the 2020 EU strategy. The systematic and comprehensive paradigm shift to a distance and strain-related user finance of the road network is the most sustainable, most efficient, and fairest option for reaching, uh, for reaching the goals as stated in the EU Green Paper of 1995 and the White Paper of 2001. I think this um, conference today was very important because we are talking about EU 2020 and the development of the European society in general and uh, we are very proud of our internal market, it's very important for us and transport is the backbone of the internal market and that's why we have to look how we can develop transport, how we can look for money for the transport, for the infrastructure and everything.